All right, welcome everybody. My name is uh, Carl Catulli. I'm the uh, Vice President of Product and Service uh, at, uh, at Rightline, and I'm going to uh, tell you about a uh, collaborative uh, engagement that we had with a company called Advanced Data Centers and uh, how we developed a hot aisle containment system for them and uh, what that whole process was about and obviously what the uh, product was about. Uh, with that, I figured I'd give you just a little bit of uh, corporate background about uh, Rightline as a company. Uh, we work predominantly in technology intensive uh, facilities like data centers and other uh, call center applications, pretty much anywhere where there's uh, an intense magnification of technology equipment uh, in data centers or in uh, personnel environments. Uh, we serve a lot of different clients across uh, a whole bunch of different verticals of uh, commercial and uh, government sectors. And we've been around for about 75 years, uh, so the company is uh, certainly not new. Uh, we go after this space uh, basically with uh, what we think are some innovative designs uh, and our uh, build to order approach and uh, our capability for uh, customization. Uh, you know, as far as the company goes, pretty much every order that we uh, put through the factory is, a, is built to order for that specific application. We can use a mix of standard products or uh, customized products to be able to meet that solution and uh, I think we do that effectively. Uh, the reason why we do it effectively is because we have what is what called a collaborative approach, meaning we sit down with clients, we talk to them, we understand what their needs are, we configure a solution uh, out of uh, predominantly uh, existing material, and then we customize uh, that remaining piece uh, to really support the client's uh, constraints or, uh, or preferences for a product. And then obviously put it through our design uh, side and, uh, and manufacturing. This was um, this unique approach was uh, was really realized by advanced data centers, and ADC came to us, uh, and ADC had a problem. They wanted to build a data center, uh, and they wanted to build that data center and uh, have a green cooling methodology. To be able to do that, they needed to aggregate all their heat together. They needed to take all that heat uh, and exchange it with outside air, uh, and a colo is is uh, specifically constrained that the uh, colo owner owns the facility and the plant and equipment, but they really have no control over their uh, clients that are gonna be renting space and bringing in equipment. So the, uh, the problem came to us that they needed a vendor neutral, rack agnostic, uh, freestanding heat containment solution uh, that allows for complete and total capture of all the uh, waste heat off the IT equipment. That was, that was the uh, refined problem statement after a few uh, discussions with them of what they were actually looking for. Uh, and the reason why they needed it, this is uh, ADC's design concept uh, of the way they're building their data center. So as you can see here, we've got air entering uh, what is now the uh, west wall of the building, uh, going through some uh, filtration and coils that are at that, at this mode would not be active at that point. Uh, pressurizing the entire space uh, loaded with racks and freestanding containment solutions, exhausting all that heat up into a re upper deck return plenum, and that heat being pulled out and dumped out on the east wall. So this actually gives them free cooling. This mode of operation of where they are in uh, Northern California gives them about uh, six to 7,000 hours of operating time uh, in a free cooling mode. So what they needed is to be able to bring this to and have any client be able to populate the space, they couldn't encumber that client with a specific rack specification or providing their racks, because most clients want to bring in their racks. Uh, so we needed to uh, design a solution. And then, of course, uh, they have the capability to go into full chiller mode. So uh, in the uh, east wall, there's actual <coughs> coil units uh, with fans, uh, and they can go into full chiller mode uh, close off the building if it's not a free cooling day or some other problem, and then cycle all that uh, waste heat back through their coils, cool it off, re resupply the data center, and be completely isolated. One of the unique things about this design is they can also go into mixed mode. They can actually reject 25% of the heat uh, and pull in 25% uh, of outside air. Why is that important? Well, you know, most people wouldn't think a 80-degree uh, day is a free cooling day. For this application, you can actually look at an 80 degree day 
as a partial free cooling day, meaning if you're exhausting 95 degree air at the back of your IT equipment, you can peel 15 degrees off uh, by bringing in some 80 degree air. Cool the 80 degree air down to your supply temperature, which is gonna be around 72, and supply that to the data center. So they can mix modes depending on the environmental conditions of the day or really how they wanna operate the data center. Key component of this uh, solution was heat containment. Uh, and why? Well, they wanted to be able to manage that return path uh, with that type of data center. It was important that they uh, could manage that uh, return path and be able to control all that heat and send it to a specific location. What you see here is just a, a, a CFD example of what uh, the containment system is doing for them, is taking all that waste heat, aggregating it into a, a chimney, putting up the return plenum, and now it can directly return to any type of uh, HVAC equipment. Uh, and once they've managed uh, the return path, uh, they can have a predictability about what type of return temperature they're gonna expect back either rejecting to outside or back to their coil. Next, they need to manage the supply path. Uh, you know, the supply path in this system is equally as critical. Uh, and if they can uh, su supply 72 degree air at the output of their uh, HVAC equipment, they needed some level of uh, reliability that that supply path was actually gonna make it to the IT equipment. And getting total isolation between hot and cold was important. And that's essentially what they've got with, a, uh, with the freestanding total containment system. Additionally, to boot, uh, they could have any size rack that they wanted in this containment system, and they could uh, change racks uh, on the fly so the racks were not integral to the containment system and still maintain that full isolation. Just a little bit about why they're doing this. Uh, supply path delta T and return path delta T. And as we look at the supply path, the actual temperature coming out of uh, the HVAC equipment and the temperature making it to the IT equipment, that's your supply path. They want to get that delta temperature as low as possible. Uh, and the reason why they do that is so they can actually drive uh, in some level of predictability to their uh, uh, HVAC system in their uh, entire data center. Conversely, they can manage the supply, the return path, the delta T, meaning the temperature that is exhausted from the IT equipment to the temperature that is being uh, realized by the uh, fan coil units. If they manage that return path, now they can also drive efficiency into their HVAC equipment. So they can get performance out of the supply path and efficiency out of the return path, keeping those delta T's as low as possible. And, and the only thing that's really gonna, in this system, that's gonna affect those delta T's, either on the return or the supply side, is the amount of leakage uh, in the containment system. So they really came to us and said, no, that we need uh, some level of integrity in your containment system uh, to be able to handle one, high velocity air, some type of pressure delta across a, uh, an input and an output, and make sure that uh, the leakage amount was uh, they actually rated it at around 3%. So we wanted to keep leakage relatively low, and that was 3% of the total supply uh, was the max amount of air that could evacuate out of the containment solution into the free space. Obviously, that would bleed uh, down the return temperature off the IT equipment. Some of the uh, bad behaviors that are now eliminated in this type of, uh, of data center. Uh, recirculation, I'm sure all of us have seen some level of recirculation in the data center where exhaust air of IT equipment is making it to the inlet of another piece of IT equipment. This problem tends to build on itself. It doesn't go away on its own, and it typically gets worse over time. Bypass airstreams. Bypass airstreams is one of, the, one of the big wastes that happen in data center. I don't know if you've ever gone up to a traditional uh, perimeter crack unit and seen its inlet temperature is already fully satisfied uh, for what it's expected to put out. So it sits at zero valve if it's a chilled water-based system, not effectively doing any work uh, other than providing potentially maybe some static pressure, but you're losing all that energy uh, returning right back to the uh, uh, HVAC system. So they wanted to eliminate that waste uh, out of the entire data center, capture that as savings, or capture that as growth uh, potential. And then next is stratification. 
uh, stratification historically uh, in data set is prevent you from fully utilizing the, the entire rack space in the data center uh, for one reason or another as, uh, as, as a stratification return methodology can easily be employed, and most data centers do employ a stratification return, uh, a heat deck will build up, and the top use space uh, can no, will typically be the warmest use space in the data center. And as you go left and, and right towards a, an aisle, or you move further away from a, from a crack unit, that can get, actually get worse. Uh, so they want to eliminate that problem and make all space in the data center uh, fully usable. And Again, with the total containment, they're able to eliminate these type problems uh, almost completely. 